Greetings. This is part two of Genesis chapter three. What really happened in the Garden of Eden? So this is part two, and this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Ezekiel. This is one book that is severely neglected. There's a lot of meat in what they call the major prophets. Uh, the major prophets are considered to be the books of Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. They're not called major because they're of more importance, but rather it refers to their large content, their large books, as opposed to books like the book of Jonah and Amos and Nahum, which are considered the minor prophets because they were minor in size, not minor in importance. All right, so let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1. Now, in Part 1 of Genesis chapter 3, what really happened in the garden, I believe if you listen to that for an hour, that you can you came to the same conclusion, if you let the Bible interpret the Bible, that the serpent of Genesis chapter 3, the talking snake, if you will, was Satan and the devil himself. So let's take a look at some of the attributes of Satan, the devil. And if you look at the word devil, devil, um, it's basically the word evil, E-V-I-L, with a D in front of it. Think about that. And the word Satan means accuser, because he accuses the brethren. All right, Ezekiel chapter 28. Let's do it. Verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now, there's a prince of Tyrus mentioned in this chapter, and there's also a king of Tyrus. And I believe the prince of Tyrus is a man, but I believe the king of Tyrus, well, we'll get to that later. Verse 2, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Now, if you've ever read the book of Daniel, you'll know that uh, the Lord revealed to him interpretation of dreams. Let's see. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasuries. I'm sorry, into thy treasures. By the great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches. Now, what's traffic? You're talking about being a merchant, you know, trading. Merchant traders, that's what they call trafficking. And let's face it, if you're arrested for trafficking and drugs, that means you're smuggling and stuff. You know, but... Uh, so this guy was doing uh, trading, doing trading things. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, 
the terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Hmm. You know, uh, Satan is called an angel of light. Did you know that? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and you know what? There's a lot of people out there that'll tell you that uh, Paul, who wrote these books, was a false apostle. Actually, I think they're false workers, but that's just my opinion. You see, Paul wrote Corinthians, a letter in the city of Corinth, which was a city in Greece. And boy, they hate, they hate that. Uh, these people will tell you that the New Testament was not originally written in Greece. They'll tell you Jesus' name is not Jesus. Uh, they'll tell you Paul was a false apostle. Um, you know, and by the time you're done, what do you got? They'll tell you that uh, the Greeks were a bunch of anti-Semites that mistranslated the New Testament from the Hebrew. And by the, by the time you get done, what do you got? Nothing. I mean, if you take away all of Paul's writings, you got basically Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You got to throw away Acts because guess what? Acts can, uh, tells the story of Paul and his conversion on the way to Damascus. And then I guess you would have Jude, uh, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, John, maybe the book of James, you know, um, and Revelation. And that's it. That's the New Testament to these monsters. Well, guess what? I say they're false. Well, here we go. Paul writes about them right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, for no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. But his light is darkness, people. So, Verse 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 28. Verse 7, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. And it's talking about, you know, what's the pit? What's a grave? Isn't it a pit? Yeah. But there's a physical pit, and then there's a spiritual pit the pit of hell. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? Somebody's getting ready to run you through with a sword, and you're going to tell him that you're God? Guess what? Ain't going to happen. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. So here we're, we're changing. Before that was the prince of Tyrus. And they said that this prince that claims to be a god is going to be killed. He's going to be slain, right? And he says he's going to die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of the strangers. But now we're talking about the king of Tyrus. Keep that in mind. 
Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So you're talking about the king of Tyrus is full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Is this man? I don't think so. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Well, this was probably, Ezekiel probably was a couple, maybe a couple thousand years after Adam and Eve. How could this person, this king of Tyrus, been in the Garden of Eden? I mean, you know, yeah, they lived a long time, you know, Methuselah and what have you. They lived, you know, hundreds of years. But this is like a couple thousand years after. I mean, this is after Abraham. This is after the flood. I mean, you're talking a long time after. This, this king of Tyrus couldn't possibly have been in the Garden of Eden unless we're talking about some, something other than human flesh. Thou hast been at Eden the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workman, workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Now, Adam was formed from the dust of the earth. But we're all born. We're not created. So if this being was created, it's not, uh, it's not human because it wasn't born. Verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What's a cherub? It's an angel. The anointed angel. And it cover, covered, covereth. What is it covereth? God's throne. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now what human... What human has been on the holy mountain of God and walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire? Uh, none, I, to my knowledge. I'm not saying I know it all, but... Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. See, this king of Tyrus was perfect. God made him perfect from the day he was created till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Wickedness, sin. Think about that, people. Now, I want to point something out. Do you know God created this being perfect and then the being decided to rebel. Do you know that God made provisions for our redemption even before he created the earth? Oh, yeah. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, According as he hath chosen us, Boy, I'll tell you what, that, that really, uh, there's people that are called free will, Arminians, whosoever will, they hate this. According as he, who's he, God, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, 
Do you know that you were chosen by God before the foundation of the world, before even the earth was created, before the foundation of the world? God chose you. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Boy, that's some powerful stuff, people. Think about it. How about uh, this? Do you know that God made provisions for our redemption from sin, the fall of Adam, even before from the foundation of the world? You don't believe it? Revelation 13 and verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Worship who? The Antichrist, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the devil, the dragon. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written, not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, who's the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world? Well, John the Baptist tells you in John chapter 1 and verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. So that solves the problem of that question. All right, let's go to... Um, Matthew 13, 35. We're going to get back to Ezekiel, trust me. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. You ever wonder why Jesus always spoke in parables? I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. In Matthew 25, 34, Then shall the king, and that's Christ, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You see, God created, the, the, the kingdom was prepared from the foundation of the world. So, you know, uh, boy, I tell you, it's some powerful stuff there. All right, let's go. Let's go back. All right, let's go back. I'm having problems with this. I'm going to end the study now.